The total cases that were diagnosed in the country were 103,981. So in that particular year, 2011, 4% defaulted, which were actually 4,159 cases. That is the actual number. I suffered TB for almost a year. I was admitted in hospital for two weeks where they did a major operation because my TB was for the intestines. And I was told I either got it by it, taking milk that is not boiled, taking blood, or meat that is not well cooked. And because of where I come from, me being Maasai, milk, blood, and meat that is not well cooked, that's our food. Kati alikuwa Nairobi Hospital, haka sema mama ni nurse, haka peo kitu mzima ya dawa, so nilikuwa na mdunga hapa nyumbani. Ni mdunga for a whole month na kiendelea na hizo madawa. I never skipped medication. And with what I went through, then I knew there are so many out there who are dying of it, and yet they do not know. Out of that, I took it in my heart, made my passion to go out there and create awareness and become a TB default tracer. A TB defaulter is a patient who has interrupted treatment for at least two consecutive months. I live with my parents in Olmehui. It's about eight kilometers away from Kajado town. If I'm to trust a defaulter, I always leave at seven in the morning. <laughs> I normally walk from home to town. It's almost like eight kilometers from home. It takes me like an hour or two to reach Kajado town. <laughs> we are at the Namanga Health Clinic and I'm just from seeing Anne. The nurse who's in charge of the TB HIV clinic, she's just handed me a list of six defaul defaulters. Uh, this list has their names, the last time they were seen, the physical address where they live, and some of them have telephone numbers. From this list, I'll be able to trust these patients and bring them back to the clinic. Hello, how are you? How are you? person that I've just called, I'm being told she's in Tanzania, across the border, taking herbal medication. To us, this is a challenge because we will not be able to trust this person. Herbs do not treat TB. We have no documented evidence so far. And we are appealing to the herbalists and anybody who proclaims to treat people, that when you see somebody with signs and symptoms of TB, cough, night sweats, chest pains, Weight loss, these are the people who should be immediately referred so that they can be investigated further through the labs and if they are found to have TB, they should be put on appropriate medication. This has really affected us so much in Kajiado. For the few cases that we've managed to trace and talk to, uh, they don't clearly understand the consequences of defaulting. So you find themselves still falling victims to brainwashing and being convinced to seek alternative treatment. From the list, there are those that don't have telephone numbers. We use the physical address. The physical address can be a church, a school, or even a shop. A good example is when I went to Maltisa. I was not able to trace this guy's physical address, so I started inquiring from people at the stage if they know him by his name. They kept on pointing, taking me from one place to the other, but I did not give up because I know that is life. I was able to trust the family shop, and from the family shop, they gave me their niece, who took me to where he was. That place, he was at Mabarini. Mabarini is a place where they go 
to take their traditional brew. If you're a TB patient and you indulge in alcoholism, then chances that you default are very high. Probably out of uh, stigma that is associated with TB, they get depressed and resort to, to, to drug, drug abuse, alcohol, alcoholism, and this one compounds the treatment of TB. It worsens the problem. If you look at the social mixing under which consumption of alcohol takes place, especially the illicit one, it is a conducive environment for transmission of TB. Then <laughs> <laughs> Kweli kwa usema kweli ndio wakati wa watu walikuja hata mimi nilikuwa natafuta tu namna angalau nifanye nini niende hospitali kwa ajili hiyo kitu nime kwa sasa sana lakini ni hiyo shida nimepata we have to come up with what we call pro poor initiatives or initiatives that support the poor patients to be able to access care Our day was successful, we were managed to get uh, John and we actually took him to hospital, that is the Manga Health Clinic, where he was addressed by the nurse and he was given some medicine for one week. And my duty will be to follow him up until he finish. And he, if he defaults again, now this time we'll take him to the Manyata, that is at the Kajado District Hospital. In these Manyatas, this person can come with the animals, in these manyatas, this person can come even with their family and they can stay there. In that particular manyata, they will be able to access not only the, 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 the required medicines, but they can also be able to access food. They will also be able to, make, to access water, which is really very critical for their animals. And therefore, these people will be able to take the medicines for the period of time that they are in that manyata. Today I'll be going to... Um, my Tisa, there's a guy I've been told that is defaulted from taking medicine. Unfortunately, we've reached here and the guy is not here. And this is what sometimes I go through. Uh, you look for them, you reach their home state, and they're not there. And the other thing is they don't even have a phone that you can be able to call them and trust them with it. So it's, it's sometimes really difficult to get these people. We are still forced to trust him. I wished he had a phone, but he doesn't. So we still keep on looking for him because he's a danger to the society. In Amanga, I was helped by the public health officers who linked me to a police officer. She accompanied me to Maltisa. And when we reached Maltisa, we were joined by another public health officer. And from there, we started tracing Minjel, whom we had traced earlier before. But I don't know what happened. He stopped again. I was forced to trace him again. We managed to meet him in one of the places where he hangs out. And he was arrested by the police officer. We were forced to use a taxi 
because we could not get him into a matatu because of his health. From my tutor, we took Mindel to Kajado District Hospital at the Manyata where they treat TB patients. We now left him in the hands of the officials. The district medical health officer decided it's a police case. If in the process of getting healed, the process of, uh, of taking medication and if you're the right path of getting healed, then you default, then it means you relapse back to where you were before. The other thing that you're likely to get into when you default from TB treatment is um, acquired drug resistance. This is a case where we find patients no longer respond to the conventional TB treatment regimen. This morning, Minjil was brought to court where he was charged uh, for negligence, i.e. not taking medication. The case was done outside because of his condition. He put him in isolation and after serving the sentence he'll continue being remanded at the Kajado GK prison until when the MOH Kajado is satisfied that he has completed his drugs. The government has put in place a lot of measures to make sure that the default rate has come down to the low of four percent that we are seeing right now and it is totally impossible to say that we will reach zero unless all the structures are in place to make sure that the patients are able to take to get their medicines where they are supposed to take the medicines we've seen the tremendous effect of default tracing using the community health workers it is yielding fruits we also want to request the community to be their own supervisors in the interest of the community. Everybody must complete treatment. There should be active TB case finding, moving literally by the health facility and the healthcare workers to the community to make sure that we track anybody who is symptomatic, to track anybody who has been on medication and make sure that those who need the medication are quickly referred to the healthcare facility which is nearest to them and they are constantly being uh, taken care of. I feel so happy when are we going to stop and I feel that she's doing a very good job. The job is challenging but this world is also challenging. So we must go along with the challenges and face the challenges. Today you succeed, tomorrow you fail. So whatever she's doing now is very, very, very good, very nice, very important, very challenging, and is also very beneficial to the community that she belongs to. I live in a case of defaulters. I always want to be a good person because there are very many out there, outside there. I'm by one of my madawa, one of watcha. They should have extension officers, field officers to go around and educate people for. For, for the need and for the good of one trying to, to follow up uh, the treatment that has been given. If you know anybody who is on medication, make sure that you kindly remind that person to take the medicines every day. TB medicines are free for everybody. TB diagnosis is free. There is no reason whatsoever why anybody at this time should be suffering from TB should develop complications of TB and perhaps even die. I cannot imagine someone dying out of TB and yet it's curable and the government has made it free for all TB patients. So because of that, nothing will stop me. I will bring them back to medication. <laughs>